Welcome to the GI Connect video newsletter. Today we'll be covering advanced gastric and gastroesophageal cancers in Asia beyond first-line treatment. I'm Cheng Yan Chi. I'm a GI medical oncologist at the National University Cancer Institute in Singapore. I'm Sato Kawakami from Kinda University, Osaka, Japan. So I'd like to start um, uh, with the introduction of gastric cancer treatment guideline uh, in, in Japanese setting. So the first line therapy can be divided into two groups based on the HER2 status. For HER2 negative disease, we offer uh, fluoropyrimidine plus oxide platin combination plus minus in bone mode. And for HER2 positive population, um, Fluoropyrimidine plus platinum agent plus trastuzumab is the first choice. For the secondary treatment, so most of the patients with non-MSI high disease, for those patients, paclitaxel plus ramsimab is the first choice. For MSI high tumors, pembrolizumab monotherapy also utilized. For further treatment, again, the strategy can be uh, different based on the heart status. For heart positive disease, we can utilize trastuzumab versus as a southern treatment. And for heart negative disease, we have several choices. So one is nibomab, if the patient do not utilize nibomab in the first line treatment. And uh, irinotecan and uh, FTDTPI is a choice. So how's the situation uh, on your side, Chen? Thanks, Hisato. So outside of Japan, um, here, here in Singapore and also other parts of Asia, we do follow the Japanese guidelines, but also uh, recognize there are also guidelines from NCCN in the US and also ESMO. So for example, in the first line setting for her two positive tumors based on the Keynote 811 study, mm -hmm. a chemotherapy doublet with 5-FU and, and a platinum uh, can be added to trastuzumab and also pembrolizumab. Based on the interim analysis, that may be considered uh, outside of the Japanese guidelines. Right. So actually, we are awaiting the survival data of Keynote 11 so that we can utilize that regimen. Moving on to systemic therapy and in advanced gastric and GE junction tumors. Um, this is still based on historical first-line uh, systemic therapy where 5-FU and a platinum doublet is quite common. Uh, I'll have Hisaru present some of the second-line data for gastric cancer in Japan. The development of secondary treatment is uh, based, based on the WJOG4007 study, uh, which is designed to compare the aeronautic and, and the weekly paclitaxel in the second-line setting. This study, uh, was the, uh, the superiority of uh, aeronautic was designed. However, as a result, uh, aeronautic uh, failed uh, to show its superiority uh, over weekly paclitaxel. So we, we, we considered weekly paclitaxel, uh, with the standard of care in the second line setting. And then later on, Rainbow study clearly showed the, uh, the benefit of adding ramsumab to weekly paclitaxel compared to paclitaxel. So now we are, con we consider the weekly paclitaxel plus ramsumab in the standard of care, uh, for the second line setting, regardless of heart status. There are other second-line trials as well. Uh, another WJOG study looking at NAP paclitaxel with ramucirumab versus uh, paclitaxel and ramucirumab, and there was no difference in either combination. Um, moving on, in MSI high tumors, Keynote 061 showed superiority of pembrolizumab um, over paclitaxel chemotherapy. Hence, now for MSI high tumors in the second-line setting, there are two options. One could go with pembrolizumab alone, or as what Dr. Hisado mentioned earlier, ramucirumab with paclitaxel is also another treatment option. So development of anti-HER2 treatment and near second line therapy has been failed for a long time, possibly due to a uh, loss of HER2 protein expression after trastuzumab resistance. Uh, actually, um, the WJOG study previously showed that 50 to 70 percent of the patient loses heart expression after trastuzumab failure. So, uh, re-evaluating the heart status is the key to develop uh, anti-heart treatment in second-line setting. 
there are several trials on targeting are uh, hard to uh, in the second line setting. The one is testing acidic all four. In this study, uh, trastuzumab was taken versus paclitaxel plus was evaluating in the patient who uh, favor to apply or trastuzumab therapy. The eligibility criteria including the um, reconfirmation of our heart rate positivity in this setting. Um, the heart rate positivity is um, based on uh, immunohistochemistry or uh, each is required because TDXD is um, ADC, which combined to uh, extracellular domain of heart two. So immunohistochemistry is the key. Another study is a Mountaineer O2 study. This is a phase two, three study and currently the phase three part is ongoing. In the phase three part, uh, there's a three arms. The one is Tkachinib and Tlacinab plus Ramsumab plus Paquitaxel. Another arm is Tkachinib placebo, uh, Tlacinab placebo, uh, plus Ramsumab plus Paquitaxel. And uh, the arm three C is Tkachinib plus placebo plus Ramsumab plus Paquitaxel. The difference between the Destiny study and the Mountaineer study is the uh, assay for a confirmation of heart rate positivity. The Destiny study is based on uh, um, immunohistochemistry or ISH. On the other hand, Mountaineer study adapted uh, CTDNA. Uh, this is based on the difference of the um, drugs they uh, employed. Destiny gastric adapted uh, ADC drug. Whereas Mountaineer study uh, adapted to cartilage, which is a TKI, so CTDNA is a key. As you can see from Hisato's um, explanation of the two um, upcoming studies, uh, HER2 positivity uh, in the second line setting is being tested by these two studies, whether it's on tissue or whether we can use CTDNA, which sometimes may be more applicable uh, in real life. So we await to see uh, these studies, whether persistent anti-HER2 strategy um, might prove to be beneficial. We're now going to look at third-line therapy for advanced gastric cancer um, and GE junction tumors. Hisato will give us an outline of on third-line chemotherapy in Japan. For well, third-line chemotherapy, uh, we have three choices. Uh, for heart negative disease. One is Irinotecan, and another one is Nivoma based on the Atlaxion 2 study. And the, the another one is um, FTD-TPI, LONSERF, based on the TAGS trial. For third-line systemic therapy and advanced gastric cancer and GEJ junction tumors, um, there are also some treatment options. Um, Hisato will give us uh, an outline on how they treat um, ga advanced gastric cancers and G-junction tumors in the third-line setting in Japan. Sure, uh, for third-line treatment, we have three choices for the heart negative disease. One is ironotica monotherapy, and the other one is nivolumab monotherapy for the patient who did not receive nivolumab in the first-line setting. The other, another one is the uh, FTD-TPI, uh, class 102 um, monotherapy. Because the uh, survival of the, um, the third line treatment is dismal, so we uh, try to improve their survival. So the idea is that adding Ramsima may improve uh, such patient. In, and uh, we currently um, conducting the two clinical trials in Japan. One is um, WJOG 15822G study. Uh, so we call it a retrieve study in which we um, uh, compared uh, FDDT pair monotherapy versus FDDT pair versus uh in a phase two study. The primary endpoint of the study was PFS, and we also evaluate the OS, ORR, DCR, and adverse events. The currently ongoing third line uh, clinical trials is. Um, Windberg study, which evaluating the adding ranzumab to Ivinotican in the third line setting, comparing to Ivinotican alone. So the study is uh, the phase three, enrolling the uh, 400 patient. And uh, uh, 
we are currently waiting for the uh, overall survival results, and the results will be uh, presented in the next ESMO probably. The study uh, will also um, confirm the strategy of ramsumab beyond the PD in gastric cancer. Additional treatment options for third line and beyond include regorafenib. This was observed in the Integrate 2A study where regorafenib was compared with best supportive care and it showed improved overall survival over best supportive care. The upcoming Integrate 2B study is ongoing. It's a phase three study looking at regorafenib and nivolumab versus physician's choice chemotherapy in the third line setting. This will be interesting to see whether a multi-kinase inhibitor with um, an NTPD-1 would be better than um, standard systemic therapy. So in summary, some clinical takeaways are as follows. Number one, and hopefully you can see overall survival in patients with advanced gastric and GE junction cancers have improved due to more effective systemic therapy. Number two, the current therapies for second line and beyond um, are still based on historical chemotherapy backbones and hasn't, and this does not reflect the current changing landscape in the first line setting. The third uh, takeaway is that when you evaluate a patient for second line therapy and beyond, there are a few things to consider, including prior lines of therapy and if there are any residual toxicities, ECOG performance status, and also if there are any competing comorbidities. Number four, paclitaxel presumptimab is a standard of care for uh, second-line treatment, but there are multiple candidates for third-line treatment, which is not clearly defined. Number five, for herpetic-positive gastric cancer, trastuzumab dilutastican was shown to be effective after trastuzumab failure. Currently, the development of second-line therapy after trastuzumab failure is the focus of attention. We've hoped you've enjoyed this video newsletter on advanced gastric and GEJ cancers in Asia beyond the first line. The accompanying slides can be viewed on the Call2Ed website.